Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Azadeh Shirazi, a board certified dermatologist specializing in medical, surgical, and cosmetic dermatology. I'm also the founder of Aussie MD Skincare. Welcome back to my channel. It is sunburn season, and many of you may have stumbled upon this video with an active sunburn. Well, not to worry, I'm going to share with you how to best treat a sunburn later on in this video. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe, and share this with a friend who might also find this useful. Now, before we get into the treatments of sunburn, let's talk about what's happening to your skin when you accidentally, hopefully, get a sunburn. Because by the time you have a burn, it's really too late to prevent. But obviously, you want to prevent a sunburn at all costs because there's so much damage that happens to the skin, not just in the present form, but also long term. I have an entire YouTube video on sun protection and SPF and sun care, which will better help you understand how to protect your skin from getting a sunburn in the first place. So some common scenarios that make people more prone to sunburns are one, cloudy days, because you don't feel the heat of the sun, but during the peak UVB hours, like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., when the UVB rays are the highest, you may not realize how much UV radiation you're getting because the sun's heat is not necessarily on you. Shut up about the sun. Shut up about the sun. People forget to put sun protection on certain areas like the scalp, the lips, the tops of the ears. If you're out in the water, you may not realize how much you're getting in terms of reflection off the water and you may use those body sprays, but sometimes with the body sprays or even lotions and things, you can miss some areas of the skin. So I find it really helpful if you're gonna be out on the water all day to wear like a sun shirt that gives you more uniform protection without having to worry. It's a time to reapply sunscreen. So those are helpful in preventing sunburns. And the lips, just be sure that you're using a sun protective balm. A lot of people don't realize that, particularly that lower lip can get a lot of UV radiation. And with women that wear lip gloss, that can really magnify the UV rays and the tops of the ears and the scalp. I like to use the powder SPFs, like UV Clear is great for that. You can apply that to the top of the scalp. It's almost like a dry shampoo. That's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. <laughs> That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. So for treatment, scroll ahead. But first, let's do a deep dive at looking at sunburns from a cellular level. So what causes sunburns? Well, yeah, obviously the sun. The sun emits a whole range of wavelengths of light, right? But it's the UVB rays that specifically target the DNA, the genetics, of our skin cells. That is the chromophore for UVB rays, which is what causes a sunburn. So the UVB rays target the genetics of skin cells, causing them to undergo cellular death, which is called apoptosis. And you see this under the microscope. You see these dying cells after a sunburn happens and you're essentially going into healing mode and repair mode from the start. Once that sunburn occurs and that damage happens, those cells are dying, really treating a sunburn comes down to supportive care, really optimizing healing the best you can, symptomatic relief, because there's not much you can do. You're now just trying to call in the troops and really just rectify the damage. So that cellular death, it causes you the blood vessels to dilate, which is why you get redness and inflammation, and the blood vessels leak all this fluid into the tissue and you get swelling. And if it gets so bad where the cellular death is so strong, you get you know almost like blisters. And obviously it should be avoided at all costs because again, the target is the genetics of the skin cells. And that's why we say, 
more than seven sunburns under the age of 18 increases your risk of developing skin cancer later on. So there are some damages that are happening at the cellular level that can affect your future skin, such as skin cancer, developing years later after a sunburn. So the damage is done, the troops are getting called in to rectify it. So how do you treat a sunburn? Well, I like to look at it in two stages. You have the early stage, which is like the first 24 hours as soon as the sunburn happens. And then you have second stage, which is day two and beyond generally can last up to a week or two. Let's start with what do you do in the early stages of a sunburn? Well, for one, you gotta get out of the sun. I don't know how many times I go to the pool and I see people still in the sun, sitting there with a sunburn. You really wanna stay indoors. You don't wanna expose your body or that sunburned skin to any more UV radiation. You may be sitting under an umbrella, but you're out there, you're still gonna get UV radiation. So that's number one. So initially you really wanna cool the skin. You've got all this heat, it's painful. You don't wanna wear like tight clothing. I see people saran wrapping their sunburn. You don't wanna do that. You're just trapping in the heat. The same with occlusives like Aquaphor or Vaseline. These thick, heavy ointments, the first 24 hours, you wanna to try to avoid it. We're trying to let the heat dissipate from the skin. It's gonna feel much more comfortable. So using a gel formulation or a light lotion like aloe vera gel is my favorite. You can also use soy or oat complexes like Aveeno has a oat gel based moisturizer that is light in formulation and has the oats that help reduce inflammation. You can also use a steroid like Soothe HC has both aloe vera and hydrocortisone. Essentially, you're just trying to reduce inflammation, calm the skin, because that ultimately helps with healing. And even though some may say, well, there's no data to support using steroids early on in sunburns, well, you know what? It does make it more comfortable. Two, it does reduce inflammation, and inflammation is just terrible for healing, and that's what I've learned in my 15 years of practice. And you can also take medications like ibuprofen or even Claritin or Zyrtec that are antihistamines to help with calming that inflammation down. You don't want to use ice. I see a lot of people trying to use cold ice packs on their skin. You don't want to do that because ice will reduce blood flow to the site and further reduce the healing process. You can mist the skin with some water that's been in the refrigerator, maybe throw in some cucumbers in there, which feels really amazing and soothing. And you want to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Because if you think about it, once that cell death happens and you get all this leakage of fluid into the tissue, you're gonna lose a lot of water. And all that heat that's coming off the skin, you're gonna feel very dehydrated. So it's so important to make sure you up your water intake and you stay well hydrated. Now after 24 hours, if you notice a blister, you do not want to pop the blister. That blister acts as nature's best dressing for that wound, which is what a sunburn is. Essentially, it is a wound. So you wanna protect the blister, you don't wanna pop it. And after the first 24 to 48 hours is when you want to start using the heavy occlusives like Vaseline or Aquaphor that you try to avoid in the beginning, in the first stages of sunburn. There are lots of great formulations. I love this Aquaphor spray that is so easy to use on the body, on the back, if you have sunburns on the shoulders, or you can just use the traditional Aquaphor, Vaseline, CeraVe has a great healing balm, as does Cetaphil. These are great options to protect the surface of the skin and help heal the skin a little bit faster. Moist skin that's well hydrated heals faster, and occlusives like heavy balms will help prevent water loss and form a coating on the surface of the skin. Now, depending on the extent, if you have a lot of open skin, you wanna make sure you're not gonna get that open skin infected. So be sure that you're cleansing regularly like you would, and you are taking precautions to avoid getting an infection after the sunburn. After five to seven days, you may start to see the skin peeling off. Ew, David. Some areas of skin may stay red or pink for some amount of time, 
and sunburns can potentially scar the skin. Some people, particularly with darker skin tones like myself, may develop hyperpigmentation and there are various treatments, topical formulations that can help with that. Alright guys, I hope you have a safe summer without any sunburns, but if you need this video, share this with a friend, save it to your favorites, and I hope it comes in handy. Until next time, thanks guys for tuning in.